Isaiah chapter 55. Come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. You who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend your money on what is not bread and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful love promised to David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous, unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to God and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will surely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper and instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. So this chapter, Isaiah 55, is what I have always called the listening prayer chapter. It's technically not about listening prayer. It's actually about listening. And you know, listening is something that you can think of in different ways. So for example, I can say to my children something like, can you go mow the lawn? <laughs> and in theory, they will go and mow the lawn. But, you know, I might get home or it might be the next day and the lawn wasn't mowed. And I might say, you didn't listen to me. Well, the fact is they did listen, but they just didn't do it. <laughs> so you can see that sometimes when we're talking about listening, we're talking about doing well, this chapter, it starts out by saying, come, if you're, th if you're thirsty, come to the water. If you don't have any money, come and buy and eat. Well, and then it goes on to say that you can buy wine and milk without money. And you can, you know, it's basically saying that if you're hungry and thirsty, you can come and obtain things without having the resources to obtain them. And you, you would instantly ask the question, well, how do you buy something if you don't have money? But then verse 2 says, this is how. You listen and eat, and you will delight in the richest of fare. And that's the reason why we've called this the listening prayer chapter, because we have these weeks of listening prayer in the church here, where we go and sit with the Lord to listen to him. And by doing so, we are buying things from God. You know, we might be thirsty, but we have our thirst satisfied. We're hungry, and we have our hunger satisfied. But not only just in the moment of the silence before the Lord, it's not only just spending that time with him which is satisfying, it's also the fact that the Lord seems to respond to our hunger for him and he starts working in our lives and doing all sorts of things. So we've got plenty of stories of, you know, being too busy to listen, but then going and sitting with the Lord and just saying, well, Lord, I'm going to put you first. I'm going to spend this hour or this day listening in silent prayer with you and then all of a sudden the lord just goes out and solves a heap of problems <laughs> and you realize you didn't need that day after all because the lord is just you know someone phones up and says well, you know that thing you were trying to do well i've just decided to give it to you or i've just sorted it out for you it's amazing how the lord is able to solve problems and so we've got this passage here which is it's about listening at kind of the do what the Lord says level, but it also has kind of the 
spend time with him and pay attention message going through it as well. Like in verse 3, for example, give ear, you know, listen, and come to me, listen so that you will live. Well, see, you know, give your ears to the Lord and you will live. In the um, book of Deuteronomy, we went through, you know, at the start of last year, there was a passage there that was describing this um, indentured servant, well, this servant called a bond slave. And so they had um, allowance for slavery or service in, in the Jewish law as well. Now, we talked about that at the time, that that was not the same type of slavery as what was in Egypt. And most of us, when we think of slavery, we're thinking of slavery like the African-American slaves. And we know how horrible that was for, for so many of them. So we kind of have this mental picture of what slavery was like. And we think, oh, dear, the Bible is encouraging this bad thing. But the type of slavery that was in the Jewish law was more like an employee situation. And sometimes someone would sell themselves into this type of slavery situation. And it was limited in the Bible for seven years only at the maximum. And then they had to be released. But they also were sent away with pay. So they were actually paid for their work. And um, But every now and then, someone would be in this situation. It's, I guess you could say it's a bit like going bankrupt. When you go bankrupt, you now are not allowed to earn much money. All, a lot of your money has to go to pay back your previous debts. There's a whole, all these limitations get put on you if you're bankrupt. You can't travel, passport confiscated, lots of things like that. Not allowed to run a business. And, um, but then after a certain number of years, three, five, seven, eleven, it depends on the country, you are freed from that and now you're allowed to be whatever. So these, this slavery situation is a bit like a bankruptcy allowance in the Old Testament. We talked about that back in our Deuteronomy videos. But every now and then, someone would not want to stop being in that situation. And the reason would be because they loved their master. That's what the passage said. And so what would happen is they would um, have to agree to it, but then they would go and have their ear pinned up to a door and they would have a hole punched in their ear and the, an awl would be poked through the ear, in, making a hole into the door. The door was like, I guess, the hard thing behind the ear so you could make the hole. And then from that time on, they were called a bond slave or a love slave. They were, they were serving their master out of love. Well, that's a picture, hopefully, of you and me. We give our ear to the Lord. We say, Lord, I love you. I want to serve you forever. Here's my ear. I promise to listen to you. And then our ear gets punctured through into the door. Who's the door? Jesus is the door. <laughs> In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the door. So it's uh, pretty clear. He's the door. So we give our ear to Jesus. We become his love slave or his bond slave or bond servant. Paul actually said in one of his letters, he says, I am the Lord's bond servant. Well, hopefully you and I are too. And Isaiah 55 is all about the benefits of those who give their ear to the Lord to listen to him. And um, down in verse 6, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he may be near. So yeah, there may be a time in the future where it's, he's not so easy to find. And maybe that's the case because if people don't seek him now, it has an effect of hardening the heart. But if you do seek him now, while your heart is soft, you'll find him in a whole new way. Down in verse 8, 9, and 10, the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And so this is very, very true. When we pray, or when we listen, we often have an idea in our mind of what God's going to do. So you pray for someone to get saved, or you pray for a situation to be resolved, and you often think it's going to happen the way you're imagining it. And then what happens is God does it his way. <laughs> it's usually completely nothing like what you thought. And then you often don't even realize the prayer has been answered. And then later on you realize, huh, the Lord answered my prayer. <laughs> because his ways are higher than your ways. So he will often answer your prayer, but bring out of it much more than what you hadn't thought you were going to get out of it. And um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, Classic example would be, you know, someone that needs more money. Lord, I need more money. The next thing, you know, the next door neighbor's saying, you know, can you mow the lawn? You know, I'll give you $20 or $50 or whatever. Well, the Lord is using your prayer 
to provide you with the extra money and to bless your neighbor at the same time. Like he's often thinking of multiple things. The Lord isn't like a, a one trick wonder. He's often solving a, a lot of problems. You know, he's multiply, he, he's so intelligent, so smart, so aware of all the things going on. With one little thing, he can sort out a lot of stuff. <laughs> It's the genius of our God. His ways are higher than our ways. And um, it says in verse 11, we'll close with this thought. So is the word that goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but will accomplish that which I please. So the Lord's words, when the Lord speaks, it achieves things. But the interesting thing about that verse is that sometimes when the Lord's word goes out, it comes out of your mouth. And we, we don't remember this a lot of the time. You know, when we're speaking to people and we say things about the Lord, we often don't realize that the Lord's word is going out of his mouth, out of our mouths, and it will accomplish something. We should be believing for that. And um, so I often do. You know, when I speak to someone about the Lord in a shop or bump into someone somewhere else, I'm a pastor, so it's very easy to talk about the Lord, especially when they ask what you do for work. And then I, I'm always aware that I've said things and it's a seed. And you know what seeds do when you plant them? They grow. <laughs> they can't not grow. They're seeds. So they don't grow when you don't plant them, but when you plant them, they grow. So that's what this verse is saying. The word that goes out of God's mouth will do something and we should be believing it. So Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you that it has an effect I thank you it has an effect on us. And I pray today that it would have its full effect on us, that we would be shaped into your image and be like you, I pray. In the name of Jesus, amen.